Welcome to K.L. Dixon Ministries International. Knowing Christ in depth and making him known at all costs. Today I am speaking about the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Uh, if you give the Lord a shout and a hand clap, that would be excellent. Thank you. The gospel of the kingdom. And uh, uh, we are getting it from Matthew 24. And we will read from verse 9. Uh, in verse 9 it says, Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will of be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this need to be laid and guided by your presence. Speak to our hearts and more especially cause a transformation. Let us drop those that are giving us the weight. And let us lift that that gives us everlasting life. Help us to magnify you beyond reasonable doubt. And all together we say, Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Now, I just want to tell you that the time we're in, the times we're in, they are the times which we need to be more concerned about the kingdom of God. There are a lot of great things that are happening. Breakthrough in science, breakthrough in military equipment, great, great through, through in ec economies of the world. But as much as all that one is there, still there are a lot of unheard of, a lot of devastating information over the world's economy. The United States is grappling with about more than a trillion dollars, which is going to bring back to IMF. China is demanding. The world is emerging, grouping. We don't know what they're grouping for, but definitely, if you have wisdom, that's a preparation of Third World War. Everybody must know where he belongs. People are dying. Things that are unheard of are happening. How can a bodyguard kill the one that is guarding? How can you go to a money lender? Instead of paying him, you just bleed him up. Uh, you know, things that are happening, they're not only happening in Uganda, <laughs> they're happening all over the world. But what is happening is to show you that all that we are fighting for, all that we take to be more precious than anything, they're literally nothing. That substance, that con something that consists is called Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. That's why it says that then they will deliver up to tribulation. That means for the sake of Christ, you will be persecuted. My brother, I become so proud if you don't persecute me because I stole your cow. But because Jesus is my friend, you can go on and, and persecute me and kill you. There are some people that are poisoned. Are you with me? I had a brother. Actually, one time a person attempted to poison us, and he did. And we did not die. But what was we, were we poison, being poisoned before? Because we, teach, we preach about Jesus a lot. The people that have lost jobs, why, are you born again? Okay. You go and Dixon give you a job. Hmm? The people that are mistreated simply because of what you believe. They are not this, they are not this, so who are they? No, we are not actually part of the world system. We are born again. Yes. The love of many will grow cold. The love of many will grow cold. One of the things that confuses you is the brother or the sister that I've been praying and worshiping with. You meet on Sunday morning and say, are we going to church? Say, ah, for me now, I've started a church down here in the valley. Since when? Say, since today. <laughs> Who has commissioned you? No, myself. Hey. It's become so cold. You say, what should I do? But let me tell you something. Don't be called to fall away. Remain put because the Lord is still with you in Jesus' name. Verse 13. 
But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Wars will be there. Bombs will fall. Uh, I mean, countries will fight. Third world war, if it wants it, it will come. But remain steady. Remain stable. Because anything that is in the world will pass away. And the word of God will remain. There is a day, tell me, there is a day when money will lose value. It will become part of history. You find the shillings, the dollars, the pound thrown on the side of the street and nobody even looks, looks at it. The time is coming when people will put on their building. Whoever wants it, you can have it. In America, you find the Mercedes Benz parked there with a note on the screen. If you want it, you can have it. All the documentations are in the car, and what is remaining is to write on your name. The transfer forms are done there in the car. But it can be there for two months. Nobody's going there. <laughs> you go to the furniture. There's a place where they are throwing furniture. There is a writing here. Do you miss any piece of furniture? Could it be a bed? Could it be a table? Could it be a chair? You, you, you can go in and get yourself what you want from this uh, yard. And things remain there, even for five months, nobody's picking. Until they pick them, touch them, and destroy them. Listen to this. Everything that has value now, it loses value when Jesus shows up. Yeah. Or oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And Jesus has given you the most valuable thing. Now, the most important scripture here, which you are reading in all of this, is verse 14. And it says, and this gospel, with all of this happening... And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. Now, I told you the word nations means all beliefs. Because in the spiritual world, God does not look at nations as geographical boundaries. He looks at nations as beliefs. That's why he said the nation of Israel. I mean, Muslims are a nation. Hindus are a nation. So, he said, for, as a witness to all the nations. I mean, occultism is a nation. They still be Saka is a nation. All those nations, we must witness to them. And then, and then, the end will come. But now, how and when is this gospel of the kingdom? Let me tell you something. There are gospels that are based on material wealth. Njagagawara. That kind of a gospel is a worldly gospel. Is there anything wrong with that? Getting a visa and everything? But has everybody that has gotten a visa born again? So you can get a visa even when you're a witch doctor. So that gospel of things is a gospel which is on the worldly standard. That's why many people want to be prophesied. Sir, says the Lord. What do I get in the Somebody say, that must be, that must be being me. Listen to this. Getting married tomorrow is not a problem. But the gospel is not that. The gospel is that God loved the world so much Amen. and gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have an everlasting life. Eh? Those of you that are tired and heavy laden, come to me, I shall give you rest. That's the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is that you die with Christ in baptism and resurrect with him. The gospel of the kingdom is that you are filled with the Holy Spirit as a sign that you belong to the Lord. The gospel of the kingdom, after understanding what Christ did for you, then you volunteer to do it for your neighbors. When you don't do that, all you're in may be the gospel but not the kingdom. And that's the gospel of the kingdom. Says, and then... The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. Brethren, in all this time we have an obligation. I don't know if some of you have ever thought about this. For some reason we have ended up being raptured in heaven but your wife, your son, your daughter, your mom, your cousin, your aunt, they're all in hell. Will you be happy? These things requires prayer and fasting. These things requires seeking the Lord. 
drawing every way, praying throughout the night and say, Lord, help my mom, help my dad, help my children, help my wife, help my husband, help my community. How will you feel when your neighbor, the next door, they're in hell and you're in heaven? Will you tell them, I told you and you refused? They come to you. They come to you. Oh, how happy will you be if all of these people that I've mentioned are with you in the heavenly territories? And how happy will you be that you did the due diligence to get them there? Listen to this. That's why today I want to tell you some of the gospel preachers have a problem. Whatever you do fails. Because everything that you're doing, everybody else can do it. The only thing that those people cannot do is to preach. So God wants you to excel in preaching. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. I said somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Plan how to reach people. Plan how to reach the poor. To plan how to reach the elite. Plan how to reach your own family. Plan how to reach everybody. And cause the flow of the power of God upon everybody. And pray that if, if it is that hard, cause a situation that will make them go humble and see the Lord. When you do that, plan which way am I going to approach them. Or look at also your behavior. Some of your behaviors are turning away many people. Tell me that some of your behaviors are turning away many people. You're gratin. You're talking like a sewing machine. Some of you qualify to be called TikTok. <laughs> because within two minutes, you have 15 stories. <laughs> you are a TikTok. Made in Fort So nobody trusts you. Because as much as you talk too much, people are wondering that if you're telling much about others, what do you tell about them when you leave them? So they become insecure. Nobody trusts you. So what I want to let you know today, do you have a scheme are you in the worship team? Are you in the band? Are you in the choir? Are you in the elders' ministry? Are you in a minister's ministry? That's not enough. What is your personal ministry? What is your personal ministry? Can I tell you, until you find out, you will find out and prove that your hands carries power. And that power, you have to give an account about it. Because brethren, when we pray here, lift up your hands, you're blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit, you receive power. I did not know I have power until I went to the hospital to pray for the sick. Everybody I prayed for was healed. And I said, eh, I have power. Some of you don't know you are great preachers until you stand to preach. People will say, if you preach like that, what about Pastor Dixon? Some of you don't know that when you speak, demons go until you stand somewhere and you speak and the demons begin to say, my way? Even me, even Kami, Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, but now when you arrive in heaven, the angels will open the books as we're about to read and align what was given to you. And the next question is, what did you use this for? And some of you say, I did not know. The Bible says, wherever you go, I'll be with you. So did you go and I wasn't with you? No, 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 I just didn't go. Does ignorance of law makes you right? So listen to this. What are we doing today? We are using our talents. We are using our money. We are using our time. We are using our strategies. Are you a doctor? Are you a lawyer? Are you a certified public account? Are you a mechanic? Are you an engineer? Are you a policeman? Are you a soldier? Are you married? All those are venues. To reach somebody. If you're a doctor, can you know the strengths and the weaknesses of a doctor? How can you reach them for the glory of God? What can you do personally to reach somebody to magnify the name of the Lord? Are you at the village? Who are your immediate friends? Who are your immediate neighbors? What have you done to make them know Christ? Listen to this. Before uh, Maurice Silo died, he said, he cried. And said, I'm so surprised. If you, when you go down to the jungles of Congo, 
you find Coca-Cola there. But there are people you find in the jungles and you say, have you ever heard about Jesus? And they say, no. Which means the Coca-Cola companies has advertised better than we have. Listen to this. God forbid we must advertise better than Coca-Cola. We must advertise better than what? Coca-Cola. And the name of the Lord will be greatly glorified. I want you to understand a few scriptures here to go deeper into this. In Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4 in verse, uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 14. This is what he says. Four. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Jesus went about all Galilee. Teaching their synagogues. Listen to this. You left your synagogue, didn't you? But have you ever gone back to witness them about Jesus? Have you ever been in their prayer meeting in the morning? Where are you here? Oh, I'm not here because I'm back. I'm here to come and tell you Jesus saves. By the way, I love you. Hmm? He went in all the synagogues, teaching their, teaching their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. <laughs> the other day we were with the Church of Uganda team. There was a function, and they took us in the house to pray for them. When we started praying, everybody was on the floor. And you know what they said? Can we talk to the bishop and you come to our church? Because we have many people like this. <laughs> I felt sorry. I was a choir member in Namibia Cathedral, but I've never gone back. I think I need to find ways and means to get back to Namibia Cathedral and say, come on. When I was here, I did not know much. Now I know Jesus, and I want to speak about that Jesus in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Have you ever tried to look at those that you used to go with? Actually, I know you were not a very frequent attendant. You attended twice a year and, and a funeral. That was an extra service. Everybody, somebody died, you say we would do one extra. Everybody, there was a wedding, you do another extra. Otherwise, you are commonly known for Easter and Christmas. And on Easter, you went to show people how much clothes you have bought. Christmas, you wanted to demonstrate your perfumes. Listen to this. You are much better than that. Now you come to the Lord to worship the Lord in the truth and the spirit. How do you reach the fellow youth? Where they are? Where is their domain? And what would be the best way for, the, for you to reach them? Heal them. Because your hands, until I laid hands upon the sick, I did not know that my hands carried healing. I did not know that. But when I laid hands on them, they were healed. I said, wow. My hands were anointed to heal. Let me ask you a question. How do you meet fellow businessmen? That means there must be different fellowships in here. Everybody according to what he has professionalized in to reach the people now for the kingdom of God. Let's go and read another scripture. Let's read another scripture. Uh, are you there with me? In Romans 10, 18, please. 10 and 18. But I say, have they not heard? Are you sure they have heard? Eh? Yes, indeed. Their soul has gone out to all the earth. The people that are around us, they are looking for money, they are looking for liquor, they are looking for women. Some people praise their dog more than they praise Jesus. This dog, don't joke with it. You can't even understand you, you, you are talking about it. They have gone up to the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Now let me ask you a question. Have your word gone to the end of the world? When we talk to people and they don't change, we go into prayer and fasting. Lord, help them. Save them. Deliver them. Lord, give me away. Let me meet them in that window, in that corner, when they have nothing else to say but to take Christ. And Lord, when you serve them, let them just not confess with your mouth, but let them confess and put their action into action. Magnify the name of the Lord. The Lord, the Bible says when we pray, God hears and answers our prayers. Have you prayed for them? And the Lord has not answered. Have you reached them and they are not saved? I want you to understand this. In the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 15 and verse 5, 
Revelation 15, 5. Are you there? After this, I, I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. I repeat, after these things, after all that I have said, after the prosperity of the world, after Russia invading Ukraine, after regrouping of American side and European side and Chinese side and African side and Arab Emirati side, after all these things, after the industries and the factories are built, after all these things, after the marriages are done, after your house which you built, after everything was done, behold, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was opened. The question is simple. In that temple of the covenant in heaven which was opened, ask your neighbor, do you have a testimony there? If your record is opened, is your name having some people that you lay to the Lord? In that testimony, it's only divine things that are going to be there, not your house, not your Mercedes Benz, not your Land Cruiser, not your Range Rover, not your skyscraper. Those are worldly things. In that testimony in heaven book, do you have your name there? I want to tell you, in the book of life, your name is there. But in the book of works, are you there? What did you do with what God gave you? Were you taken over all over the earth looking for men, women, liquor, uh, houses, lands? You are all occupied. And you fall like a piece of wood and you wake up even before you know that it's already day. Do you have a recorded testimony in heaven when the book of testimonies was opened? That's why we work day and night. There's an overnight I'll be there. Uh, they are going to a crusade in town. I'll give them the sound equipment. Uh, they are doing this. I'm giving them the fuel. They are doing this. I'm, I'm building. They are putting it. You know, we try to create a heavenly testimony with our actions. Every man of God that has been blessed with money, he will stand and testify and give a, a, a accountability of the money he got and what he used it for. Well, men of God will not go to hell, especially when they serve the Christ, but they may have a percentage that they will lose upon their arrogant spending. Because God will say, I gave you five billion. This five billion would have brought to me one billion souls. What did you do with the five billion? I bought a Mercedes Benz, I built a skyscraper. I ate lunch in Dubai, dinner in London, and breakfast in Rome. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Lord said, that was good. But how many souls did you bring? And they will calculate, I couldn't have any calculation. Say, this would have brought 5,000 souls, but you did not bring, you just misused the money. God has given you talents. Some of you, when you speak, people do not want you to stop speaking. When you dance, people say you dance forever. But one thing, what is in the heavenly record that you've done to add to the kingdom of God? That's very important. I want you to, to, go, in, uh, to go on and see. We're still going in the next verse, verse 6. And out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven pledges, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chest guarded with gold bands. Trouble. Trouble. The church has already been separated. Those people that did works, now it's, it's done. No more. There's a seal. Verse, verse 7. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven gold bowls full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Now, these are, now this is the judgment of the world. The angels are given seven bowls to power to the world. And they're filled with what? Let's go to verse, verse 8. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. And from his power. 
and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven pledges of the seven angels were completed. Now, these seven bowls, what do they carry? God is now punishing the world. He says, for the time you had to worship me, you never worshipped me. There is this message of prosperity, which is good. We need to prosper. The economies of the world, however strong they may be, they may not be part and parcel of your transition to go to heaven. But you must. Paul says that whoever doesn't work should not eat. That's what Paul says. And a lazy man must not appear on your table. But when a person, when I used to sit with my mom and my uncles would ask me, what did you do today to qualify you to eat tonight? I washed the cows. I did this. We went to the garden. That's very good. Do that one always. But there are those that would not appear when uncles in the table because they cannot answer the question. Those want to eat, eat after and eat cold food because they did not work. So working is okay. But don't work and forget your everlasting life because it will be much greater than anything else. Next, 16, 1 and 2. Then I heard a voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. Go now. You're already prepared. And pour the wrath of God on earth. Do you know what happens when the wrath of God comes? Plagues, pandemics, COVID, wars, death, extreme anger and wrath. Where do you get the wrath from the man, the man, somebody who lent you the money to pay him by shooting him? Where do you get the courage to shoot your own master, the one you're guarding? Hmm? Where do you get the courage to bewitch your dad and even take him for sacrifice? Where do you get the guts to kill your mother? Where do you get the guts to change the boundaries when there's a title? That's the wrath of God that has been poured. Today people sit and plan. He's not going to build here. He will do it over my dead body. But the one who says you won't be, they are not the owner of the land. They are simply hating you. Listen, that when the Lord is on your side, you're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Verse 2. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. In a fall, a loose some shore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. A loose some shore. Ibihoya. Abu na bakaba baini ubokuro raho wenyamaiso yabakwat. The last time we got COVID, actually COVID was not that very hard. But the, the quickest response of the world was close the church and let the markets open. <laughs> I would I would imagine going to a window when the church is closed. So a window was more you know, strategic, smarter than the church. In the church here, we make one announcement and everybody heeds. You know, we know nobody heeds until police comes. But those were the smartest people during COVID than the church. Do you know why? The church has the power to change people's understanding. But all we know doesn't have it. Let me tell you something. Why? Because when we worship, when we teach, we give you faith. Why people, COVID killed a lot of people. It was not because COVID was a killer, dangerous killer disease. But people got what was the strongest weapon of the devil, fear. And when you fear, even my lady will kill you. The dog, when it chases you and you stop, it cannot go any further. In fact, when you begin to move towards it, it goes backwards. And when you make four, five steps, it runs away. But the moment you make one step ahead, it will bite you. COVID is like a dog. Any sickness is like a dog. There are people that are sick and they will never be healed. Because every time you go to see them, how are your sister? That one will never get you. But what you need to say, can you come up? 
Pour them out as if you are taking them to the hospital. You sit here. Give them a glass of juice. <laughs> Tell, go and take a shower. Go to the sunshine in the evening. <laughs> you have delivered them. Because there are some people that have slept for the last five years. They are sleeping. And at times, they have even accustomed to the sympathetic words. <laughs> so they can't tell you they are okay because you won't give, me no give them nothing. Listen to this. The Lord is on your side. Believe in the Lord and they will surely deliver you. Dr. Gambire, you are on your side. <laughs> Don't stay in that state because listen, I've never seen a beggar that is a, a millionaire. <laughs> and beggars are not choosers. Whatever you give a beggar, he appreciates. But nobody has become a millionaire out of begging. Beggars, by the way, eat better than you do. But none of them has made a shop out of begging. You understand what I'm talking about? So what I'm trying to tell you today, there's something supernatural that even now as I'm talking, recently China had closed its capital city over COVID and they were registering over 10,000 people that had died. And the experts told them, look, when you put these people in a confinement, you create fear. Let them go everywhere. Now nobody's dying and COVID is still there. COVID is here. What killed us then was fear. Today, COVID, can, we can catch it and it will be treated. Let me tell you something. When you believe in the Lord, you're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. But your preparation for everlasting life is major. And when God puts down the wrath of God, do you know how the wrath of God is separated from the children of God? We live by faith, not by sight. The word lives in fear. There are people today that are holding money left and right. The, the economy, even America has fallen. Brethren, what do we do? If America is this way, the, the world is for power financially. What do we do? Let me tell you, whenever the Lord is with us, we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. We go through. I was in Kampala the other day. Do you know about half of the Kampala is on sale? Why? Many people could not cope up with COVID because the banks did not reduce those two years. The interest rate is still there and there's interest on interest. So there's no businessman that will survive this. You either have to go back home, sell your land, to come and receive your building. Half of Kampala is on sale. Now, the people that worked hard, today it's like, I don't see even what I, because I have to lose all the buildings. And the buyers give you what they can. Uh, then the question, cash. <laughs> Listen, how hard. I don't know how many of you understand what I'm talking about. You never work, went to church. You started the work at five. You slept at midnight. Now within a second, you don't own anything. And the police is looking for you. Have you ever imagined that day? When the court blocker came to sell your house and you looked like a criminal when you had committed no crime. Actually, these people that have come to sell your house, actually, they are the criminals. Your house is valued this, they want to sell it this. Listen to this. What happens to you when that time comes? The Lord will be your rescue. Yeah. So get time to give time to your creator. Because there's a time when everything is messed up and it, it has no meaning. Do you know what remains? Jesus remains. And Jesus will remain with you all the way to everlasting life. You are the solid log in which I stand. That's what we sang today. So that is a solid log. Somebody shout hallelujah. It doesn't matter even if there are turbulence, there are fibrous winds. Whatever comes, we will remain put because we are on the storied lock and that storied lock is Jesus Christ. Stand up and let us pray.